Lesson 23, a JavaScript library for Ajax. In this lesson, you will learn how to encapsulate some of the techniques that you know into a small JavaScript library that you can call from your applications. The topics we will cover in Lesson 23 are an Ajax library, reviewing myahalib.js, implementing our library, and using the library. There are a number of JavaScript code techniques for implementing the various parts of an Ajax application. Among these methods are a method for generating an instance of the XML HTTP request object, which works across the range of currently popular browsers. Routines for building and sending GET and POST requests via the XML HTTP request object. Techniques for avoiding unwanted caching of GET requests. A style of callback function that checks for correct completion of the XML HTTP request call prior to carrying out your wishes. Methods of providing user feedback. Techniques for dealing with text data returned in response text. Techniques for dealing with XML information returned in response XML. In this lesson, we will build a more fully featured library that allows Ajax facilities to be added simply to an HTML page with minimal additional code. Our Ajax library will not be overly complex or comprehensive, however, it will be complete enough to use in the construction of functional Ajax applications. This list shows the code of myahalib.js. Let's consider how we may extend the capabilities of this library. There is currently support only for HTTP GET requests. It would be useful to be able to support at least the HTTP POST request too, especially if you intend to build applications using the REST protocol. The library currently only deals with text information returned via response text and has no means to deal with response XML. Having identified what needs to be done, we'll now put together a more capable Ajax library. Let's turn our attention first to the routine for creating instances of the XML HTTP request object. Currently, this function is coupled tightly with the routine for constructing and sending HTTP GET requests. Let's decouple the part responsible for the creation of the XML HTTP request instance and put it into a function of its own. We can now create XML HTTP request object instances by simply calling this function. We'll start with the GET request. To this request, we must pass as arguments the URL to which the request will be sent and the identity of the XML HTTP request object instance. We could exclude the query argument because, in a GET request, it's encoded into the URL. We keep the two arguments separate here to maintain a similar interface to the function for making POST requests. The query argument must be suitably encoded prior to calling the function, though the cache-busting random element is added by the function. Next, let's continue with the POST function. How do we deal with the callback function? We're going to add a further function. This function uses JavaScript's eval function to execute another function whose name is passed to it as an argument, while also passing to that function an argument of its own via item. Let's look at how these functions might interact when called from an event handler. Our function doAjax now takes five arguments. URL, the target URL for the Ajax call. Query, the encoded query string. Callback, identity of the callback function. Rec type, post or get. Get XM, one to get XML data, zero for text. This listing shows the complete JavaScript source code. To demonstrate the use of the library, we're going to start with another simple HTML page, the code for which is shown here. This simple page displays only a button labeled Test. All the functionality on the form will be created in JavaScript using our new Ajax library. The steps required to Ajaxify the application are 1. Include the Ajax library myajaxlib.js in the head area of the page. 2. Write a callback function to deal with the returned information. 3. Add an event handler to the page to invoke the server call. 
We'll start by demonstrating a GET request and using the information returned in the response text property. Including the AJAX library is straightforward. Next, we need to define our callback function to deal with the value stored in the response text property. For these examples, we'll simply display the return text in an alert. Finally, we need to add an event handler call to our button. Our server side script libtest.php simply echoes back the parameter sent as the second argument. Meanwhile, the remaining parameters of the function call declare that the callback function is called cback, that we want to send an HTTP GET request, and that we expect the return data to be in response text. This listing shows the complete code of our revised HTML page. This figure shows the result of running the program. To use the same library to retrieve XML data, we'll use the server-side script called Our First Ajax Application, which delivers the current server time in a small XML document. Our callback function must be modified because we now need to return the parsed XML. We'll use some DOM methods that should be familiar. The only other thing we need to change is the call to our doAjax function. Here, we have decided to make a POST request. Our server-side script, telltimexml.php, does not require a query string, so in this case the second argument is left blank. The final parameter has been set to 1, indicating that we expect the server to respond with XML in the property response XML. This example shows the result of running the program. The current library might be improved in a number of ways. These will be left as an exercise for the reader, though in many cases the techniques have been covered elsewhere in this program. User feedback, for example, has not been addressed. We previously discussed how the display of suitable text or a graphic image can alert the user that a request is currently in progress. It would be useful to revise the library to include the techniques discussed in Lesson 13 and elsewhere. Error handling, too, has been excluded from the code and would provide a useful addition. For example, it should not be too difficult to modify the library to detect XML HTTP request status properties other than 200 and output a suitable error message to the user. Feel free to experiment with the code and see what you can achieve. This lesson combined many of the techniques discussed to date to produce a compact and reusable JavaScript library that can be called simply from an HTML page. The code supports both HTTP GET and HTTP POST requests and can deal with data returned from the server as text or XML. Using a library like this allows AJAX to be introduced to web pages using relatively small additions to the HTML markup. This not only keeps the code clean and easy to read, but also simplifies the addition of AJAX facilities to upgrade legacy HTML. You can now test your knowledge in the quiz area, access the scripts we learned in the lab, or go through the lesson again. The choice is yours. Thank you for choosing Sam's Teach Yourself.